Hey everybody, welcome to our video on using the Microsoft Office file dialog object in Microsoft Access. Today we're going to discuss how you can show the file dialog in your Microsoft Office applications. You can use this dialog box for multiple purposes. We can use it to allow your users to select file, a file or files that they would like you to process or do something with. You can use the folder picker function and allow them to choose a folder. And you can also use the Save As functionality, which allows your customers to select a location and then provide you with a file name. So a couple things for us to note about this dialog. It is a modal dialog box, meaning when you show it, it will show on top of your other access windows. Also, all of your code execution will stop once it's shown. Code execution will only begin again after your users have dismissed the dialog box, so after they press either the cancel button or the open save button. Also, you can only have one of these open at a time in your application, and some of the values or some of the properties you set will hold over onto subsequent instances of the dialog box, even if you destroy it, the reference to it in memory. So let's take a look at the database we're going to use this in. I have a sample form here with two objects on it. I have a button, which we'll use to show the dialog box. And I have a text box here, multi-line text box, that we'll use to show the results of what we did. So when we pick files or pick folders, we'll show which files and folders we selected in this text box. It is called text selected name. Let's head over to our code now. So here's the click event for the command button, command show. At the top here, I have a note to remind us that in order to use the Office file dialog, we need to make a reference to it under tools.references. It is this line right here, the Microsoft Office object library. The version number will depend on what you have installed in your machine. So we have a variable here, fdialog, to hold our Office file dialog object. And we have a variant. When you choose files and folders in the dialog, it returns the names of them as a variant. So we want to have a variant to receive those. Here at the top, we have our text box on our form that we want to clear out each time we press our command button. So the first thing we want to do then is create our file dialog object. Okay, so f dialog equals application file dialog. So the first thing we want to do is create our file dialog object. Okay, so we're going to set the f dialog equal to application file dialog, and then open parentheses, and we get to pick what type of dialog box we want to have. We have four choices: a file picker, a folder picker, a dialog open, and a dialog save as. Okay, the file picker and the dialog open are very similar. In these cases, you are just selecting, you're browsing to and selecting files. The difference between the two would be there's a little bit of additional functionality in the dialog open. The dialog open has, and the save as, as a matter of fact, have an execute method that you can use. Now, I don't believe it's very useful to us in Access. So what the documentation suggests it will do is it will open a file for you after your users select a file in the dialog box. However, the way it really functions is it will open a file that your application is capable of opening. In Access, if you select another Access database to open, it will give you a runtime error. In Access, if you select an Excel file to open, it will also give you a runtime error. However, you can from Excel, it is a, a multi-document interface, from Excel, you can select additional Excel files and use this execute method, and it will open them for you. And I believe the same thing would happen with Word, although I've never tried it in Word. That's something you could try. So that's the open and the file picker. Under folder picker, it does just what the name suggests. It allows you to select a folder. And the save as allows you to specify a location and a name. So we're going to use file picker. So first, before we forget, I want to destroy our reference to the object at the very end after we're all done. So down here under our sub exit, which is the code will fall through if everything goes well and the code will go to after our errors if we have any. We want to destroy our reference to the object. Set f dialog equal to nothing. Free up that memory. Next, 
I want to set up a width and end width here so that we can work inside here and not have to type a whole bunch of stuff. We can set the title. In this case, I'm going to set the title equal to choose the spreadsheet you would like to import. And back over here, you can see that title appears at the very top in the title bar. Allow multi select. You select, set this equal to true or false. If you set it to true, you can select multiple files at one time. And let's actually let's go ahead and do that because that's fun. But false, it'll only allow your user to select one file at a time. And also, you can give your users a head start, so to speak, in, loca in the location you start by giving it an initial file name. Now, you don't have to give it a full file name. You can give it a partial path, if you will. What I've done here is I've given it a folder. Now, you can leave off this slash if you'd like. And if you do that, what it will do, though, is it will fill in this last portion in the file name box. If you put a slash on there, it'll leave the file name portion of the dialog. That's this portion down here at the bottom. All right. It will leave that blank for you. And when you're using the folder picker, you want to make sure you have a trailing slash there. So next we're going to set up our filters. Our filters are how we tell the dialog box what types of files we're looking for. So first we want to clear our filters. Like I said earlier, some of the properties from previous instances of the dialog will hold over onto newer instances. So we always want to clear out our filters and make sure that we get the filters we want. And then we use the filters add to add the filters. So first we give it a string, which is the text it shows in this drop down box right here on the left. And then we give it the actual extension that we want to filter for. In this case, I'm using XLS star, which will give us all of the, which will give us the older spreadsheet types as well as the newer ones, the XLS X, the XLS M, and et cetera, et cetera. Now you can add multiples if you want to. I'm going to copy in some commented out code here that we're not going to use, but I just want to just so you can see it. You could get specific and do Excel files and list them out like this if you'd like. And you'll get an entry for each of those in that drop down box. All right. But we're not going to use that. We'll just have that copied in there. The way that we make the dialog box appear on the screen is by using the show method. I want to copy in that end if here, or else or end if. The show method returns a Boolean variable. It returns true if your users clicked. Well, let me go over here. If your users click this open or the save as button on the left, it returns a true value. If they click the cancel button, it will return a false value. So you can interrogate that while showing it at the same time. So if show equals true, we'll have code here to run if they clicked the open button. Else, they didn't click the open button, they clicked the cancel button we might want to have some code down here that does something instead. Now we're not going to do anything about it in this example, but you could if you needed to. So if your users clicked the open button, we need to test if they actually selected a file or files in the dialog. We can do that by looking at the selected items collection and using the count property. If it's equal to zero, even though they selected the open button, they didn't click on any file that was in the list. Again, you might want to do something here or not. We could just, in our case, we're just going to go down to sub exit and get out. So after we've established your users have selected a file in the dialog picker, then we need to get to the file names. And we do that very easily here using the variant that we have here. Remember that we allowed multi-select to be true here, which means your users could select more than one file. And we need to account for that by having a loop down here. There's a selected items collection, again, it holds the names of each file they selected. So for each ver file, which is our variant, in this collection, we're going to get that name and we're going to put it in our text box. We're going to follow it by a carriage return line feed so that each file name will be on a line by itself. And there's the end of the next. And that is it. We have our else down here for if they didn't select the uh, open button. That's all we're going to do. So let's click save over here, head over to our form form view and pop it up. So there's our dialog box. I'm going to, so when you've got multi-select on, it works just like other dialog boxes in Windows. You can click one, you can control click to get ones that are not contiguous, or you can shift and click and select a contiguous list like this. 
we're going to select OK here, and then we can see here that we have all three of those file names listed in our box. So back over to our code. Very quickly, we could set allow multi select to false. And again, I like to use this for each loop, even when I have multi select to false and I can only select one file. But there is another way that you can get to that file name without having to go through a through that loop if you wanted to. You can set your variant equal to the selected items, item number one in the collection, since we know that they could only select one, and then get to the file name that way. I'm not going to do that. I just wanted to show it, though. So let's do a folder picker real fast. MSO dialog folder picker. Now with the folder picker, we're going to leave it like this, and I want to show you the error we'll get. We're going to get an error. The reason for that is my filters. Okay, you can't have filters when you're using the folder picker. Save and run. So we get the we get the dialog box up. We can select desktop. We can select HTML folder, for instance, and then there you go. So very quickly, let's do the save as functionality. We don't want to use the filters with the save as either. Let's click save, click run. We can say, uh, give it a new file name, new file. Here, click the save button, and then there's what we selected in the dialog box. So as we've seen here, it doesn't take very much code to make this dialog box appear on your screen, and you get quite a bit of built-in functionality from it to boot. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned something, and we'll see you next time.